Well, hello, my dear sewing friends. And today in our So Easy series, we're going to be making super fun and super easy palazzo pants for summer. If I can do it, then you can do it for sure. And these pants are going to be kind of like the ones that I'm wearing right now, but way, way easier in construction, super versatile. So I really hope that you're going to enjoy this project. First, I'm actually going to start by picking up fabric for these pants and I already have my pattern drafted. So I'm taking it with me to the store so that way I know exactly how much fabric I need to buy. But don't you worry, we will be talking about the steps on drafting these pants a little bit later. Now here I'm looking for simple cotton because I want really easy care instructions, I want these pants to be durable and I want them to be really comfortable during hot summer weather. I wear a ton of bright clothing during summer so juicy prints right away catch my eye and I think one of these is probably going to be the winner. Now here I want to encourage you to keep your options open in terms of fabric because here are the exactly same pants that we're going to be making but instead of cotton they're made in viscose and you can see the drape is just beautiful. All right I have my fabric here let me show you the print before I put it in the washer. Look at that! How fun! Now I might dye it slightly yellow or slightly blue after the pants are complete um, just to kind of uh, fill in the white but I'm gonna think about that. Uh, but for now this is great. It's really nice and soft. Let's put it in the washer and let's get started on the pattern. Now to make it really easy and really straightforward and since you and I have already done all the heavy lifting for it, we're going to use a basic pants pattern as a starter for these palazzo pants. Now these basic pants come from a video tutorial very detailed that show you how to measure yourself, how to place those measurements on a paper pattern, how to draft a crotch curve, how to do all of the other things to create a basic pants pattern that you can use after that for a lot of different design variations and that's exactly what we're doing today. If you need a refresher I will leave that detailed basic pants video for you guys in the description of this video. I'm going to get started with the back pattern piece first. Here's my basic pants pattern and this is my palazzo pant pattern. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place one on top of another so that way you can see the difference and modifications and I'll talk you through them. I have aligned my patterns here at the crotch and at the knee and of course down the center of the leg as well. So the first thing that we see is that the new pants pattern is shorter on the top than the basic pants pattern and that is because the basic pants go all the way to the waist without accounting for the waistband just yet. But since the palazzo pants will have the waistband and I don't want to add three inches of waistband or two inches of waistband on top of the waist that would make for extremely high waisted pants. Of course I went ahead and I took three inches down. So all you're going to do is from the top of the pants over here you're going to take three inches or two inches or however much lower you would like three inches here and three inches here because of course the top of the pants in the back isn't straight or perpendicular it's on the angle. And once you have measured three inches all through you're going to make a new line for the top of the pants. Then everything stays as is up until the crotch line and please keep in mind here that the basic pants pattern that I'm working with already has half an inch of ease for each pattern piece which gives us two inches of ease all throughout the garment. Now here at the crotch line I added quarter of an inch at the crotch curve and quarter of an inch at the crotch line over here on the side seam so that way I can make a straight line from the waist or the new waistband all the way to the hem. Here at the knee I decided to add two inches and a quarter to each side to make for that really nice wide leg that I'm going for. That would of course adjust this part of the pattern as well and as you can see this inseam is slightly curved but basically almost straight in my case. And then I kept the width of the knee all throughout and until the hem. That's it, the back pattern piece is ready. Here for the front pattern piece we're going to take three inches down just like we did for the back pattern piece because of course the length of our side seam needs to match. Here at the crotch line again a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch here that's what I added for my pattern piece. And here at the knee instead of adding two inches and a quarter I added one inch and three quarters of an inch and then I just took a straight line down from crotch all the way to the hem and a slightly curved line over here from crotch to the knee and then a straight line all the way to the hem. 
as you saw, that was really easy and straightforward. All I did was to add a little bit of ease and then create the shape of the pant leg that I would like to see in my pants, which is basically just straight from hip all the way to the hemline. Now yours can be flared if you'd like to, yours can feature a ruffle on the bottom if that's what you're into. So definitely take a look at your designer ideas and make them come to life. And if you're not sure about what exactly you're doing, it's always wise to make a muslin or a sample. You can use an old bed sheet for that. That will save you a ton of nerves. And the last thing that I want to mention before I start cutting my fabric is that from hip up, so from hip all the way to the waistband, my pants pattern is also straight because I'm going to be doing a gathered waist. So if yours isn't, you do have to adjust for that because with a pull on pants, you have to make sure that you can pull the top part of the pants through your hips. Hold on, I forgot about the pocket. So I do have really detailed tutorials about different types of pockets and how to sew them. So you can definitely choose what you would like from those tutorials. But to give you a quick gist of what I'm doing over here is I actually want to create a really neat side seam pocket. I might be doing French seams on these pants and I want to sort of conceal that pocket in that French seam. And as always, I judge the size of the pocket by my hand plus a little bit extra. You can judge the size of your pocket by phone, keys, or whatever else you want to carry in there. And I want the opening of my pocket to be about two inches from the top and to be about, you know, let's say, I would say, let's say five and a half inches over here. For the back pattern piece, my pocket is going to look like this. You can, of course, round the corners over here or do them straight, whichever way you prefer. My pocket is going to be five and a quarter this way, five and a quarter this way. And I like mine to be sort of like in the middle of the top part of my pants and about two and a quarter inches down from the top. A quick reminder over here, don't forget to walk the seams of the front pattern piece and the back pattern piece to make sure that everything aligns when you're ready to sew. And now we can start cutting the fabric. So I'm finished cutting my big pattern pieces and now I will cut all the small details from whatever is left. Now here I need to cut my front pockets, my back pockets and the waistband as well. For the waistband I'm going to do some things very special and we will definitely talk about it at the end of the video. But you can of course opt for a very simple casing for elastic and be done with that. It's definitely up to you, just don't forget that you will need fabric for it. Now for the front pocket, one side is going to be cut from the main fabric and the other side I'm going to cut from really lightweight cotton. And I will do exactly the same for the back pockets as well. The construction of these pants is really straightforward and I'm going to start with the front pocket pieces. I'm going to place the white fabric with the main pattern piece of the front pant and I'm going to transfer the markings that we made on the pattern. Now I'm going to take about 5 eighths of an inch in because I left half an inch for my French seam plus I'm accounting 1 8 of an inch for the turn of the fabric. I will take my pocket and I will place it right sides together on top of the front pattern piece of my pants. I also went ahead and applied a little strip of interfacing on the pants part right where the pocket is going to be opening so that way it will give it a little bit of extra stability. Now with a straight stitch we're going to repeat the marking that we made with heat erasable pen on top of my white fabric. Once that is done, slightly cut it out, then clip at the corners all the way up to the stitching but not past it, and then turn the fabric to the wrong side and give it a really good press so that way we have that beautiful opening for the pocket. Now I will top stitch that about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the opening. 
Since I decided to use French seams for the construction of these pants, I'm also going to do that on this pocket as well. And as always, when we do French seams, we start by placing our pattern pieces wrong sides together and then completing the seam. If you need a little refresher on how French seams are done, I will leave a link for you guys in the description of this video. Once the pocket bag is done, it's going to look like this. And now I'm ready to proceed to constructing the back pockets and attaching them to the back pattern pieces. Here, everything is really straightforward. You don't have to do what I'm doing, but I decided to align my pockets. Here, the trick is to make sure that the lining is a little bit shorter than the pocket piece itself. And I'm going to start by doing a straight stitch from seam allowance to seam allowance right on the top. Once that is done, I will go ahead and understitch so that way the lining doesn't poke to the outside. Again, from seam allowance to seam allowance. Once that is done, I will pull the lining down to match the actual bottom of the pocket. And now we're going to do a straight stitch all the way around, leaving a small opening on the side so that way I could turn the pocket right side out. It's ready to be stitched on top of the back pattern piece and I'm going to do that with two rows of stitching but of course you can do whatever is best for you. Once both sets of the pockets are done, it's really a smooth sailing from here. We're going to complete a side seam and the inner leg seam first on both the right leg and left leg. And we're going to do that by placing them wrong sides together because of course I'm doing French seams and I'm going to start at the side seam. Once the first step of the French seam is complete, I will go ahead and trim that bulk that is created by all of those layers of the pocket. So that way, when I'm done with the second step of the French seam, it's not going to create a lot of thickness in that area. But be very careful to not to clip more than absolutely necessary. Pressing my French seams between the steps really helps me to get that nice and crisp result. And here's an extra tip. After my side seam is done completely, and depending on the pattern and the type of pants that I'm working with, I sometimes press my hem right away as the next step. That way it's easier to do it when your pant leg is flat instead of when both of the seams are sewn and doing it in the round. And of course after that I'm going to be completing my inner leg seam with the French seam method as well. After constructing both the right and the left leg, we only have a couple of things to do. And here I'm going to do a leg and leg method. So I'm going to place one leg inside of another one and I will align my crotch and complete it with a flat felt seam. If you feel that these steps were a little bit too fast for you, then I do have a full series on how to sew pants step by step, including how to cut the pattern on grain and all of the things that you will need to know. And I will leave that playlist for you underneath this video. Video. The hem here is about an inch and a half wide and completed with a blind hem stitch on the sewing machine. Now I only have the waistband and that's it, the pants will be ready. Now I am preparing for you a very detailed tutorial on how to complete this exact waistband step by step with all the measurements that you will need. So that is coming in about a week and a half or so. If you are a member of this channel, then you do have this tutorial available for you as an early access. And if not, then go ahead and subscribe so that way you don't miss this tutorial. And right now, let's go ahead and take a look at how the pants turned out. Here I wanted to show you the details of the pants and also how truly versatile they can be. I styled it with the white linen shirt and as you can tell I made the shirt myself. I haven't finished the buttons just yet but I wanted to show you that you can really dress it up with a nice shirt like that 
or you can really dress it down with a more casual t-shirt. So you can really play around with the style of the pants. They're really comfortable. And I truly hope that this video gave you some ideas and inspired you. Members of the channel, thank you so, so much for all of your support. And if you did like the cardigan that I was wearing at the beginning of this video, then I have a really detailed sewing and drafting tutorial for you right over here. Take a look and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.